Welcome back guys. Today we'll be doing January 2019 CSEC question number 3B and 9B. Let's get started. For question 3B, the diagram below shows a right angle triangle with sides A units, B units, and C units. Now, for this, we can see that it's a right angle triangle. This is 90 degrees. We have the angle theta. Theta has a side B, which is called the adjacent side. So this we can label as ADJ, which is the adjacent. C is basically the hypotenuse. I'm gonna label it as HYP. So that's the hypotenuse, which is considered to be the longest side on this right angle triangle. And this is the opposite side. Now remember, we see adjacent side because it's right beside the angle. This is opposite because it's opposite to the angle. And this is the hypotenuse, which is considered to be the longest side. Now, part one states, using the diagram, express C in terms of A and B. Now, how can I link C with A and B? We know Pythagoras' theorem that C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. That's Pythagoras' theorem. So we're going to use that concept. So we know C squared is equal to a square plus B square. Then I can square root all of this. So square root cancels the square. So that means C is equal to the square root of A square plus B square. Let's look at B. It says write in terms of A, B, and C, an expression for sine theta plus cos theta. Now, we know that sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Also, we know that cos theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So knowing this information, I've already labeled that B represents the adjacent, C is the hypotenuse, and A is the opposite. So it means that sine theta is equal to opposite, which is A, hypotenuse, which is C, and the cos theta is equal to adjacent, which is B, and the hypotenuse, which is C. So the question is asking you to express in terms of A, B, and C, the expression sine theta plus cos theta. So it means sine theta is A over C and cos theta is B over C. And that's it. We have sine theta plus cos theta to be A over C plus B over C. Now, the next part of this CSEP question is asking to show that sine theta all square plus cos theta all square is equal to one. Now recall, we have sine theta is A over C and cos theta is B over C. So replacing sine theta, I'm going to have A over C all square. And then replacing cos theta, I am going to have B over C all square. Now squaring this, it means I have a square over c square 
plus b square over c square. Now we know if we have a third plus five over three, since the denominators are the same, we keep the denominator and add the numerator, say five plus one will give me six. So just like numbers, that's what we do with letters. The denominators is the same. We have c square. So I'm going to write this as c square. And then add in the numerator, I have a square plus b square. Now when we get questions like this, there's some relationship. Recall that I have a square plus c square. Remember Pythagoras theorem? It's going to be c square is equal to a square plus b square. If somebody is wondering, how did we get this? It's from our understanding that this is a right angle triangle. And using Pythagoras theorem, we have c square is equal to a square plus b square. So the hypotenuse is equal to the square of the opposite plus the square of the adjacent side. So using that information, a square plus b square is the same thing as c square. That's what it's saying. The two sides being squared is the same as the hypotenuse. So I can replace this with c square. So I will have c square over c square. And this going to itself one time. So the answer is one. And therefore, prove it. Now this question states, a person at the top of the lighthouse, TB, so this is at the top of the lighthouse, sees two ships, S1 and S2, approaching the coast as illustrated in the diagram below. The angles of depression are 12 and 20 respectively. The ships are 110 meters apart. Complete the diagram below by inserting the angle of depression and distance between the ships. What we're going to do, we're going to find out where 12 degrees and 20 degrees will lie on this diagram. Now, angle of depression means that we are at the top looking down on the S2, which is representing this, the second shift, and S1, which represents the first shift. The person is on the top of the lighthouse looking down on the two ships. So we're trying to find out the angle at which this person is looking at sh on ship two and ship one. We're given two angles of depression, 12 degrees and 20 degrees. So to find out where the 12 degrees will lie, basically, where I'll have my eyes, I will have the horizontal line and an angle being formed between the line of sight and this horizontal line, and that represents the angle of depression. And this is the angle 12 degrees. We're able to see that the angle at which this person is looking at ship two is at 12 degrees between this horizontal line and the line of sight. So the larger one represents the, the S1 will create a larger angle. So it's between the horizontal line and the next line of sight, S1. That would represent 20 degrees. Now, let's look at what's happening here with the 12 degrees. This horizontal line is parallel to the line BS2, where BS2 is the surface level of the sea because we're sailing in the sea, so this is at the ground level. So this is parallel and this line of sight represents the traverse line. And we know that from geometry, if this is 12 degrees alternative angle, so it means that right here, I will have 12 degrees also. In addition to this, remember the next angle is 20 degrees. It will be formed between the horizontal line and the line of sight for S1 to basically look at the ship S1. 
So the angle that is formed is 20 degrees. Now, once again, we have this line being parallel to BS. Since it is parallel, we can just say that this is the traverse line. And if this is 20, then it means right here is also 20 degrees. So these are the two angles that we're going to use. And then between, they said the ships are 110 meters apart. So therefore between S1 and S2, the distance is 110 meters between the ship. Determine to the nearest meter the distance T S2. So this is T S2 between the top of the lighthouse and ship 2. We don't know the length of TV. We don't know. But what I do know, I can find the angle here because angle on a straight line adds to give me 180. So if this is 20, the missing information is 160. I also know that a triangle should always add to give me 180. So 160 plus 12, that is 172. So I'm missing eight degrees. So this will be eight degrees. So here I have a triangle. So I'm gonna take this triangle here. So here we have, this is the 160. Between S1 and S2 is 110 meters. This is 12, this is eight, and this is what is needed. So once again, pull this apart, we know that we want T, S2, the length. We know that this is eight, this is 160, and this is 12. And the distance between S1 and S2 is basically 110. Now we can label this diagram. Capital T, the angle eight is facing the side, uh, so that's side T. This will be side S1 since it's facing the angle S1. And this will be side S2, the angle facing S2. Now, given that I have some angles, three angles and a side, and I want another side, what I can do, I can use side, sine rule because sine rule is where we have two angles and two sides. So we can have two angles, which we have enough information. We have, can get two angles and uh, we have one side and we can find the other side. Now you're used to A over sine A is equal to B over sine B. That's the sine rule we know. But we can manipulate this. I have some information. I have this to be eight. This is the angle. And the side that's facing it, I have the 110. So I'm going to use that information. So it means I can change A over sine A as first the side T over sine capital T. We are trying to find this side. So I label it as S1. So we can look at S1, which is a side over sine capital S1. Now, T, common T represents 110. So I'm going to replace here with 110. And capital T is the angle, which is 8. So I'm going to have sine 8 is equal to common S1. This is the side that we're trying to find. So I am just going to label it as x and then sign s1 that's the angle s1 is 160 so i have sign 160 so what we're going to do is just make x a subject you multiply both sides right sign 160 this cancels and then you calculate 
sine 160 times 110 divided by sine 8 and you should be getting 217 meters which represents the length of TS1 so it's 270 meters all right so the next part wants the height of the light hose TB the height of the light hose TB so I want the height of this light hose TB we can get the, the height but first if you realize we do have the hypotenuse right because we can get a right angle triangle here so we have a right angle triangle here we know the hypotenuse and what we need is the opposite tb so we know that for this we have basically this right angle triangle, this is B, this is S2, this is capital T, and it's a right angle triangle. Just found out this is 270 meters, and our angle here is 12. If you realize we only use a 20 to get this 160 that I have here. But the right angle triangle that we're going to use is this larger one because we have the hypotenuse and we can go ahead and find the opposite so this is the opposite side and we know the trig ratio that is that is sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse So we know sine 12 is the angle and we're trying to find the opposite. So I'll have X, this is what we're trying to find. And we know the hypotenuse is 270. So multiply both sides by 270. So this would cancel so that means x is equal to, so sine 12 times 270, that will give us 56 meters. I repeat. So for this, we found the hypotenuse. We want the opposite side. So I just redraw this without this line that we have here. So this is a triangle and they want the height TB. So here we have the hypotenuse, the longest side, and we have an angle, and it's right angle triangle. So that means to find out what is the unknown, which is the height, then I have to say sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, where the opposite side is what we're trying to find, and the hypotenuse is 270. To get rid of something in a denominator, we multiply both sides by what is in the denominator, which is 270. This cancels and multiplying 270 times sine 12, I'm getting 56 meters. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Have a great day.